Hi, and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Here we'll be talking about 3D printing, laser engraving and milling. I love modeling and sculpting my own designs and I often share many of them for free downloads. For my new projects, I bought a newly released 3D printer, the P2S, and sold my P1S just in time before the big price drop. I model whatever I feel like, for example this bear which you can print in color even without an AMS system. The shoelaces are just PETG filament, by the way. And here's one from my Flexi series, a Kano Taurus. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't, well, stick your finger up your nose. At the end of this video, we'll check the views to likes ratio. Let's see how many people were picking their noses during this one. You'll find the free download link in the description below. All right. Let's talk about the 3D printer. And don't worry, this won't be a long unboxing. I'll make it quick. Modern 3D printers, at least the better quality ones, are super easy to assemble. My very first printer was back in 2017, and back then you had to build those things for hours. Now it's much faster. Plug in the display, loosen five screws, connect the cables in the back. Done. I also sold my A1 and upgraded to the H2S. I wanted a bigger printer so I could offer more new models, and of course I wanted the new AMS2 Pro with the drying function. I actually have two of those now. For the second one, I'm printing boxes for silica beads. Important tip, don't print them in PLA. If you ever dry PETG or other filaments at around 65 degrees Celsius, PLA boxes could melt. So PETG is the way to go. Here in the other room, I've already connected it to Wi-Fi. And even though it's brand new, there's already a software update available. My silica boxes are already finished too. They're sitting there looking all happy. As I mentioned, they're printed in PETG. Sure, PLA usually looks nicer and releases more easily from the print bed, but PETG is just more practical for this use. There's even a funnel for pouring the silica beads in more easily, but I prefer the professional way. Just dump them straight in from the bag. That's how the pros do it. The hygrometer I got from Bamboo Lab, I usually pay part of it using MakerWorld points, which is why I mostly stick with bamboo filament. With the hygrometer, you can always keep an eye on humidity inside. Those 4-liter cereal containers work great for this too. I've got around 30 vacuum bags lying around, but all of them are already full. So for PETG, since I'm now switching many products to this filament, I went with these new boxes. I still need to print some hygrometer holders for them though. While I'm running my first test print, I've got a tip for everyone starting their own 3D printing business. Focus on one filament brand and don't offer every model in 50 different colors. Stick to four to six colors. It's much easier to stay organized. I've got tons of filaments from all kinds of brands here, and many of them even need AMS adapters. The test print's done. I printed myself a scraper that came preloaded on the printer. The print quality is, as always, excellent. Take a look at this model. I printed it with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, but I highly recommend getting 0.6 or even 0.8 millimeter nozzles. For most models like flexi animals or larger prints, that's more than enough and you'll save a ton of time. Here's a vase that could be printed much faster with a bigger nozzle, but because of the angle, the standard settings would make the lines too thick. So always think ahead about which nozzle is best for your model. By the way, this vase was designed specifically as a flower vase with a glass insert. So even if it tips over, 
the glass stays inside and unbroken. When I got the H2S, I ordered 0.6 and 0.8 high-flow nozzles right away. And of course, I just found out they'll be 30% cheaper next week. I'm going to print with fuzzy skin using the 0.6 nozzle. With a 0.4, I'd need three walls, but with the 0.6, I only need two, and I save over three and a half hours of print time. Fuzzy skin just looks awesome. And the notepad holder with the FlexiCat, that one's also free to download, my friend. Now, about the nozzle change. You can swap nozzles in under a minute. Just remove the rubber seal, take off the cover or the other way around, loosen the holder, pull out the old nozzle, pop in the new one, put everything back together, tighten it, and you're done. Here I'm printing with pre-dried PETG, not for the full 12 hours, but still dried a bit. You can see some filament lines on the supports, but I don't mind. The print came out really nice. The outer wall looks perfect. Removing PETG can take a bit of effort, but with my test print scraper, I'd definitely win a one versus one duel against the build plate. Drop me a comment below. What kind of 3D printer do you have? And if you've bought a printer in the last two years, and it's not a bamboo lab, why not? If you've got friends, share this video with them. And if you don't, subscribe, and we'll be friends. Oh, and stop picking your nose. Just leave a like instead.